Hello everybody, I thought I'd have a look at a section of the arena from Hamza's Den where Afif Kaja calls in. I will try and analyse the discussion and offer some scientific analysis. Hi Hamza, uh, hi everybody on the panel, thank you so much for taking me. Uh, so there's a hadith that I wanted to talk about with regards to women. This is from Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 304. It says, uh, narrated Abu Sayyid al-Khudri, once Allah's messenger went out to the Musalla to offer the prayer of Eid al-Adha or Eid al-Fitr. Then he passed by the women and said, O women, give alms, as I have seen that the majority of the dwellers of hellfire were you, women. They asked, why is it so, O messenger of Allah? He replied, you curse frequently and are ungrateful to your husbands. I have not seen anyone more deficient in intelligence and religion than you. A cautious, sensible man could be led astray by some of you. The woman asked, O oh Allah's Messenger, what is deficient in our intelligence and religion? He said, Is not the evidence of two women equal to the witness of one man? They replied in the affirmative. He said, This is the deficiency in your intelligence. Isn't it true that a woman can neither pray nor fast during her menses? The woman replied in the affirmative. He said, This is the deficiency in her religion. So my first question is, is it really true that women are deficient in intellect and that is why their witness is equal to half of that of a man in, in Islam? Are you serious? Before before that, Atif, um, I want to answer, because obviously this stream is about challenging Islam, making it, proving it to be false. How does this hadith prove Islam false? It put doubts into the claim it's from a divine source if it looks more likely to be from a 7th century understanding as I will try to demonstrate. I don't think it proves Islam false, but I think it, it shows... But, okay, no problem, no problem. In that case, we would say bring a, a source that would demonstrate Islam to be false. Because, let's be honest, Afif, um, you know that we've addressed this several times. You already know this. Uh, I'm not so aware, bring... unfortunately. Um, I was okay, hoping... so we have a statement from Rasulullah Islam where he says two things about uh, women, that they are deficient in uh, intellect, all right? Um, so let me read the uh, thing, yeah. uh, deficient in intellect. 304, Bukhari, uh, 304. Right. Yeah, no, I'm looking at the report, yeah, and deficient in religion. Yes. Both are true, okay, for the reasons that al Islam has stated. You say these statements are true because you believe in the religion, nothing more. But like you said, it doesn't, it doesn't um, mention, and, and the thing is, it's like, we can say this proudly because any sister in the chat, any woman who is a believer would not argue this from a Rasulullah If a Rasulullah said so, and, and given the reasons for it, they will say that this is correct. Of course, a devout Muslim woman would say that if she believed in her religion, but do the statements stand up to any scrutiny? This is on part of our nature. Uh, he's simply explaining the nature of women. Um, so, like you said, you don't believe that this hadith proves Islam to be false. So, present something that you believe will prove Islam false. Because at the end of the day, you, you've presented yourself as an ex-Muslim. Therefore, there is something in Islam that has shaken your belief to the core that you decided, I can't do this anymore. So, what is that? So he's just deflected by putting the focus back on Afif by asking him what caused him to leave the religion. You think that we need women need two witnesses? Is that what you said? Yeah. No, no. I'm saying the hadith says that the witness. No, no. You said you said it though. You you said women's testimony and stuff. Yeah, half of a man or something. That's what the hadith says. Right. That, that's only that's only in one case. It's right? only it's only with regards to the thing. Okay. Do you know who Aisha Anha was? Uh, she was the youngest wife of Prophet Muhammad. She was okay. Do you know that how many hadith emanate from her? I think she's next to Abu Huraira. Right. So where, why where is this? Why are we taking them from this one woman if we need two? Because we're not following the hadith of the Prophet in this regard. Or you've misunderstood it. Or I've misunderstood it. Yeah. And what do you think it is? I think that um, if based on the hadith that the evidence of one woman should be equal to that of one of two women should be equal to that of one man therefore the narrations of Aisha should, of be, what? should be in, equal should be should um, need in one matters woman. of what it didn't say the hadith doesn't say in matters of what right. look um, if you if you look at the Quran you'll be able to know it's this is the verse to which he is about to refer 
there is some mention at the beginning of a financial transaction element. Mention in Surah Al-Baqarah. Um, anyway, so do you think you've misunderstood the Hadith or that, or we incorrectly just believe Aisha and we ignore that Hadith? Yeah, I think um, that based on the Hadith, that the evidence of two women should be equal to the witness of one man. In all cases, unless specified by the Hadith, which just doesn't say that. In all cases, where does it say that? It just says that by the default. No, um, no. In the Quran, what does it say? What, what's the matter well, it's pertaining to? We're not going to tell you, but what, is it, what do you know? Um, okay, so we're just regarding the Hadith right now. So in the Quran, I think um, there's one verse that says that um, the um, the the witness of uh, so uh, one one man has um, equal authority to the witness of two women in um, financial no, transactions. In the Quran, what does it say? He just answered your question, as he said, it relates to financial matters. Yeah, oh, in financial, in financial transactions, so that if one of them forgets the other, in what in what in financial transactions, financial transactions continue. So, so if one of them forgets the other one, can remind her. Right? No, no. Right. Yeah, but that's not what the hadith is saying, right? That's a, that's what the, that verse is saying. But that's what oh, so that's not what the hadith say, but that's what the Quran is saying. Yeah, because the hadith would say. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the Quran is saying what in financial matters? Yeah. And and the hadith does it say it's not financial matters? Or is it something else? It just says in. It doesn't say any qualifications. It just says. No, but the Quran the Quran is clear because this hadith will be referring to this. So the Quran says financial matters. Yes. Yes. Now, what do you think, women? What do you think happens to women where you might need two of them? They're deficient in intellect. Might get pregnant. No, might get think, periods. Based on the hadith, it's because they're deficient in intellect. Right? So, so deficient, uh, deficiency. Deficiency in intellect. You're deficient in intellect. <laughs> Sorry, go I on. Think, yeah. yeah, I don't know that. <laughs> deficiency in intellect doesn't uh, mean stupid. Of course it does. What else does it mean? Let's have a look at what some scholars say. In this article, linked to the description, it clearly says deficiency in intelligence. Further on in the article, the explanation is given that this relates to financial transactions and similar matters, but not so in household affairs, where a woman's memory is stronger than that of a man. In matters that are exclusive to women and not witnessed by men, then the testimony of women is accepted individually. This highlights the 7th century understanding of matters. It does not make an allowance for women who may have received training in financial matters, or for men who have trained in women's health, who would then know more about the topic than many women. Right. It just, like, like it says in the Quran, that one of them may err. Right when someone makes mistakes and stuff, and some or, or something so, that is, uh, it's easy to make it's easy to make sense of this, right? Aqal mm. reasoning. Well, yes. when you have a fiqh muamala, when you have the fiqh of transactions, there are many rules and considerations to have, and so quite simply for us as Muslims, uh, women who don't specialize in matters of transactions, what is and what is not permissible, what the calculations are. This is the deficiency being referred to. What is the solution if it's a man and a woman and neither of them have had any training in financial matters or a man who hasn't had this training with a woman who has? And it's very specific. If you go back to the Hadith itself, it's under a specific heading, right? We don't simply take the Hadith and try to mold them uh, into what our preconceived notions are. The Hadith comes with an added context, and the Quran gives us that basis. Would that be correct, Yemeni, or have we misunderstood what it says today? No, that's correct. And because, you know, I mean, you, it, Alhamdulillah, you z zeroed in on the word that's used in the Arabic, which is aql, all right? Um, which, yeah, is reasoning, right? So it's not... Uh, it's not intellect itself, it's not, but it's, yeah, it's not the intellect application itself. of intellect on content, ideas, and beliefs. Yes. Right. And yep. so in that society, and even now, we don't find that the majority of people who study the fact of transactions are women. It's actually men. Why? Men specialize in that area because they tend to be the business people. Yeah. It's quite simply the case. So I would argue here that you, a thief, you have applied a preconceived recency bias because up until the 1950s, 
you don't have business women as we have them today. So can we conclude both those sources are irrelevant because they do not apply today? So why should the Hadiths try to answer a problem which up until now had not recently surfaced? Where does that, where, where does that authority and where does that basis come from and why should it be applicable to the Hadith? Okay, fair enough. That's a good question. Uh, that's basically the question I had and uh, thank you for responding. Um, but you didn't answer my I, question. Oh, sorry. What, what's your question? I, I didn't understand. Yeah, if you so, could repeat that um, one more time. Wait. The problem. So my question was this. The idea of women specializing in business, do you agree that this is something recent and yes. not something right? So it's a recent social phenomenon. Right. It's still the case that the vast majority of applicants to business school, those who specialize in MBAs are men, not women. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of accountants are men, not women. I feel like I'm wearing a Jordan Peterson hat right now, right? <laughs> so it's simply the case that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a chapter about women's menstruation, what they are allowed to do and not allowed to do while they are on their menses, mention something about the application of fiqh and their worship in that specific setting. That makes sense to yeah. us, that's what we understand. So my question to you, Afif, is why should that impact how we view women today when the context of it is for a time and place that made sense when women weren't in the business field as we find them today? How have you not committed the recency bias? Well, I don't think it would be uh, accurate even in the past during the time of the Prophet to say that okay. women are deficient in intellect because they're witnessing... In what circumstance? In what circumstance? Of Hadith doesn't think? specify that. It does. What is the bab? What is the head in the... Uh, it does. What is the head in the Hadith is under? Um, uh, is it under menstruation? Yeah. So what happens during menstruation? Uh, okay. Do you understand yeah, that? Yeah. Okay. Let me put it Are this you married, way. Uh, I'd rather not talk about my personal life if I can avoid it. Um, okay. Are you aware life. of women having periods? Yes. Are you aware uh, of the effects of women month before, month during, a month after? No, Hamza. Women do not have a period for a whole month. So your question of the month before, the month during, and the month after is totally nonsensical. Typical period lasts for two to seven days and occurs once every 21 to 35 days. Yeah, do, do you mind if I just uh, phrase my question on that, uh, if you don't mind, just so you can answer it uh, properly? So my second question was, women are not allowed to pray or fast in their menses by Allah, not by their own choice. So why does that mean that they are deficient in their religion? I won't focus on the deficiency in religion, as that's of no scientific consequence. I don't understand the objection here that Allah cannot say. Mm. So that it's wrong to say that women on their menses mm. experience things which are negative. Mm. They, they have negative effects when they're on their menses. No. Month What's before, month, a week that? before, a week before, during yeah. and a week after. Yes. It's, it's like a one week of grace we have. <laughs> Because then it's coming, it's on, and it's remnants. And then we yes. get like one week of woo! Let's look into the claims about the effects of menstruating. This recent review linked below examined the menstrual cycle in healthy women and it did not show consistent associations between cognition and menstrual cycle phase. In fact, we can ask why is there such a focus on the mental capacity capability of women during the menstrual cycle? Why is there no mention on men and how they are more likely to have certain mental health illnesses which lead to negative outcomes that are more likely among men? The simple answer is that this was all written by 7th century people who did not have an understanding of science. A divine being would have ensured that the instructions were correct and relevant for future times.